and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, results that we've had in the last uh, two years, the pilot project. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit as, as well about the uh, um, the project so far involving a whole uh, class of Italian second year, and the level is uh, around A2. So they have a little bit of a, of Italian, but it's not, you know, they're still they're still making progress. Let's say to say it the positive way. <laughs> So um, I've put a lot of information on the PowerPoint. So, you know, please do feel free. I have put a um, a flicker, a, a media prime with a flicker. I'll just, I'm going to stand in front of it. Um, and the flicker represents the, the pictures uh, that we are, have taken uh, lately and, and also in the last two years. Uh, they represent uh, situations with students. There is a, uh, there are a few um, other things. So if you want to use Flickr rather than uh, uh, blind yourself on on uh, the writing in the PowerPoint, which I'm going to talk about, please, there is at the top right there is a little uh, um, how do you call it a little uh, uh, frame with a, a, an arrow, and you can launch uh, you, you can, can launch, launch a slideshow, slideshow if you know how to use Flickr. Uh, it will launch on your computer. It, uh, personally, I cannot launch it for you. So please let me know how you go. If you rather read the PowerPoints, that's absolutely fine as well. All right, is everyone ready? You can type in the in the in the uh, local chat. I will see your your questions as well. All right, fantastic. Okay, so. Um, I've uh, actually uh, uh, named my PowerPoint the next thing to being there because basically what is missing for uh, most students in a language classroom is, is that uh, type of immersion or that survival kit that we get when we travel in, in, uh, in the country where we've uh, learned the language. And what we're trying to replicate, of course, with uh, the 3D environment and Second Life in particular, and I'll explain why, Second Life and not Open Sim, uh, is, is to be able to give the students uh, the ability of, of uh, you know, being in, in situation. So the project started in 2012. When a teacher of French, I had mentioned a second life in, in our university and a teacher of French uh, then expressed the interest in, in uh, trying to get some students, volunteer students uh, in world with me. I've been, you know, gauging and explaining and, and doing a little bit of showcase here and there whenever uh, people were, the teachers were, were, were keen on listening. And because I'm a teacher of French originally as a background and a teacher trainer, I've, uh, the, the teacher of French uh, trusted me in, in providing the students that kind of immersion, both within the lab because I, uh, I wanted to use Second Life in French, uh, the interface, we get the students to change the interface in French, uh, in Italian and Spanish, of course, for the other languages. And we also give instructions in French and we get to meet native speakers. Um, so the immersion is, is absolutely full, be it in the lab and uh, in Second Life. Um, after the first trimester, then we had the Italian and the Spanish uh, teachers also indicated their interest in getting the students involved as well. <coughs> so the first trimester, uh, the students connected from their computer. And it made a big difference to the experience that the students now experience in the lab. And I'll talk, talk about this uh, a little bit later. We had three different levels. Um, we had from A1 the first year. We had Italian A1 and the French were B1 and the Spanish were A2 uh, level on the common European framework of reference. And uh, it's an op optional uh, component of the course. So the students uh, could choose, they could, uh, you know, we asked them to commit if they started uh, with us, they could come to the first session and then if they kept on coming, then, you know, they would stay with us until the end. Um, and uh, yes, so I mentioned in a lab and from home, 
the in the first uh, instance uh, we didn't have any graphic cards in our lab so the students uh, could only connect from their computer it made a huge difference in their level of engagement uh, because we basically are, or our only point of contact was uh, you know in world which meant that the students could actually really focus on whatever we were doing and they were um, they were relying on the communication uh, we couldn't, uh, with, with the, the fact that we were not in the lab, uh, students uh, had to either use the local chat and voice. So it involved a, a few issues with their own um, um, laptops. But we had indicated to the students earlier at the stage, you know, if you want to connect from home, you need to have the technology at home. So, yes, I can see <clears throat> biologists were collecting gaming desktop to run his cell. Well, that's really good <laughs> for your labs, I believe. Yeah, okay. All right. We'll talk about this if, uh, if I hope we have time um, afterwards. You can befriend me. I'd be very happy to talk to you about, uh, about more things. Okay, so uh, the idea there as well, because it was optional, uh, the students didn't have any homework. And uh, originally, in the first two years, <clears throat> we just um, asked the students to come in world. And what I was observing from them was their behavior, whether they enjoyed it, whether it was too difficult, etc. And, and I'll talk about the results uh, later. So um, the, assess the assessments uh, was also optional for them, so they could choose to either talk about their SL experience or not. Uh, at the end of the year, in their final oral presentation, what they uh, generally do was to talk about a topic of their choice in a group, as a group. So generally, it ranges from two to five. And uh, all all the uh, all the students who experienced SL wanted to talk about this at the end, so that was a positive outcome as well for us, uh, or for me, uh, because, because I realized, realized that the students were actually quite keen on talking about what they had uh, lived, and and it meant it meant as well that the you know students had actually experienced emotion and engagement uh, within Second Life. <clears throat> Uh, the uh, we, we had all the sessions except for the Spanish on the second year. The sessions were early morning because we were trying to uh, connect with native speakers. And since we are in New Zealand, we are on the other side of the world, and we were connecting uh, with people the day before in the evening. Uh, so we were connecting with French speakers at about uh, eight o'clock, depending on the time. I mean, now we're saving, we're changing time with daylight savings are coming. So now we have 10 hours difference with Europe, with Italian and France, Italy and France. And uh, so that means that uh, we start at 8.30 in the morning and it and proved, it proved to, be to be quite challenging, challenging for the students. For the students. So, so the aim the of aim the project, of the project is, is, as I mentioned, as I mentioned before, we're trying, we're trying to, to uh, provide, provide um, a, a, a social, social and contextualized and environment where, um, where, where I'm going to read this, learning is viewed as a social process whereby knowledge is co-constructed. So we want the students to learn from each other, learn from guest speakers, and learn from the environment as well. So as for example, if we're, we're visiting Notre Dame uh, in Paris, and I've, I've never been inside Notre Dame, I've been outside, but I've looked at pictures uh, on Wikipedia and other pictures that people are taken from inside Notre Dame. And I must admit that uh, the real life version, the second life version of Notre Dame uh, inside is very, very close to what is uh, the real life. Uh, so we're trying to, uh, I was trying to get the environments to, um, you know, have that in, in, um, influx of more information um, and, and the students talking to each other and also learning from the guest speakers who had built Notre Dame, for example, as an example, on Second Life and talk about their experience about buildings. So, for example, when we had the visit uh, by the builder of Notre Dame, he mentioned that he had taken 140 pictures in real life to be able to apply them to the textures on the, on the cathedral in Second Life. And, uh, you know, all these things. And all this, of course, was in French. So it wasn't involving, uh, it was involving partly language that had been learned in class, of course, all the basic, uh, you know, talking about maybe architecture, but talking about architecture is probably something that they had never really encountered in, in their, in, in, in their classroom situation. So that was extra, 
uh, to their language. And that's what they visit. If they visit a museum in France, they will probably, if they're lucky to have an, an English guide, they will probably in, in Paris. But if they go into a small village, they will have their visit, their, their guided visit in, in French. So we're trying to, I was trying, with, with Secular, what I'm trying to do is, is give them a survival kit uh, you know, or, or put them in a situation, in a, in a situation, a real life situation when they will be uh, in a situation where they will have to use any French that is required to involve communication on the spot. Um, so yes, yeah, so for my second point on this on this slide is, is really to bridge the gap between what they are learning in class and the real life applications. And uh, so in 2014, which is this year, we're trying, I'm trying to uh, uh, include the experiential approach, which means that the students also reflect on their experience on Second Life. So at the moment, we haven't gone uh, any further than just reporting on what they have seen. But I hope that, uh, uh, you know, in the second part of the trimester after Easter, we will try to get them to reflect on their learning experience within Second Life. So I'm just going to go through very quickly on this uh, on the slide about the experiential uh, uh, learning. If you're not uh, sure, you can um, Google Kolb, David Kolb in 1984 and come up with uh, the notion of experiential learning. And basically the experiential learning um, is, is getting the students to reflect on their learning. And I think this is quite an important to involve um, deep learning, uh, you know, rather than just learning a, a vocabulary list by heart, we're trying to get the students sort of understanding why they are learning that vocabulary list. Um, so yes, I would like the students to actually think about why we're taking them on Second Life and try to uh, also understand what it is to learn a language for a mark or for assessment and get their paper and credit and the difference between <clears throat> learning in the classroom and actually putting it into application in real life. Nelly, you can't see the slides? Sorry, I'm afraid to move. You can just sit on a, if you sit, oops. I don't Sorry. even know where I am. Okay, I got them. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I just, I don't know why I teleported. My mouth is, my mouth is, is... Uh... Okay, I got it, I got it. Sorry. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah, you have the, the slide yeah, with yeah. Kolb? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the pedagogical principle, as I mentioned, uh, and I'll go fast on this one, is, is uh, following what Harrington and Holliver in 1995, uh, the Acelite yeah, Conference, mentioned about building and uh, get the students to access learning environment that have authentic context and what we're trying to do with there and the reason why I'm using Second Life is since it is uh, a, a, a really rich environment uh, that includes Paris. If I try to find Paris on OpenSim, uh, I, I'm not sure how I, I, I could actually find the information. Um, we're trying to get uh, the students to visit Venezia, Costa Rica. We had done that. We we have art galleries. We have uh, also seen that our fantasy. So yes, Nelly, I can I can see that. Um, and we uh, try, try to, to provide, provide those authentic, authentic activities. activities. So, so yes, authentic, authentic activities, activities include having native speakers. speakers. We're doing role plays. Uh, uh, we, we do shopping. shopping. Um, and of course, all that in the target language. So we use communication. We've in the past we've used uh, voice and local chat, uh, and I'll mention that uh, a bit later when I talk about the results of uh, uh, the uh, the uh, survey that I did. Uh, again, we try to access expert performance. So that's that's the, uh, the guest speakers are talking about their job on Second Life, like building. Uh, a Spanish class had a, um, a Spanish uh, a, a building uh, class with uh, you know raising boxes and then changing their box into a bottle or a Christmas tree. Uh, all that was in Spanish, so that involves a real uh, 
real uh, real targeted type of language and vocabulary but the idea was not to understand and, and remember everything it was just to put the situation in uh, the, the students in a situation where they don't understand everything but make sense of what is uh, 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 required of them <clears throat> We, yes, so with those building as well, building uh, uh, classes, uh, we provided multiple roles and perspective. Uh, hang on, I'm just looking at the, the slide. Uh, I will look at it on the, I don't see anything on the slide, but uh, I don't see anything on, on. You see them fine? Okay. Okay, so I'll carry on. Can I carry on? Yep. Okay, right. So, um, of course, collaboration, construction of knowledge. Again, the students were uh, helping each other. They were teleporting each other. They were um, helping each other to describe an, an area, a, a place, a place, a situation. situation. Um, and, and coaching, coaching we, we had, had two, two, we had, uh, two tutors, tutors for Spanish, Spanish and Italian, and, Italian and, and myself uh, for, for French. French. <coughs> um, and, and this year, year we have actually two tutors uh, of Italian, Italian plus the teacher, the lecturer who is observing observing the, stu the, the students, and myself as a coach for Second Life and all the technical issues. I can, I've learned Italian very, very quickly in the last three months <laughs> to cope with in case the tutor cannot come up. Um, but um, it is very, very difficult to actually, um, you know, I can, I can, I'm, I am put in a situation where I have to use Italian uh, very quickly. I have to think very fast because Second Life demands improvisation all the time. It demands a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, a plan Z. And, uh, you know, we have to change things very quickly. So when I speak in Italian, uh, I do make the mistakes that the students also make. <laughs> I hope they recognize that. Anyway. Um, yes, and what we're trying to do is promote that reflection, and I hope that in the second part of the trimester we'll get the students to uh, do that. I do that with the French already, um, where I get the students to write on a wiki uh, about what what they they see on Second Life and what they find bizarre. But I will try to find I'll try to get them to to express that right in the moment where they find it bizarre, because otherwise they'll get used and then they forget about it. Um, and speaking, of course, the language of instruction, everything is in French, being in the, la the labor laboratory, as I said, or, you know, the instructions, the viewer is in French, and, of, of course, well, all the, the things that we do on Second Life is related, related to, to the language that they are learning. And the possible integrated assessment is, of course, uh, uh, related to their oral presentation at the end of the year. So what, what we, we do with virtual, virtual world, world affordances, uh, we, we can, can do, do virtual, virtual tourism, we interview native speakers, uh, role plays, online shopping. We, we did. We went to the ESL marketplace last week with the uh, students and I showed them the type of things that we could uh, buy. Uh, um, with the French, uh, there is a lot more developed on Second Life than there is for Italian. The Second Life uh, marketplace actually has uh, a, a, a language option where you can change the marketplace in France, in French. So they could look at the categories in French, and then we looked, at, we compared. They were doing comparisons in class, and we compared di three different uh, uh, fashion shops. I mean, all of them are girls this year. We had boys last year. Uh, this year, they are, we have girls, so I, I took the opportunity. And they are also doing the topic of fashion. Uh, and comparing clothing and and, uh, and consumption habits, so that was absolutely timely to look at the Second Life marketplace. So I got them while browsing on the internet. We were not in world; we were outside uh, Second Life, but we were still talking about Second Life. Uh, what they had to do was to look at the marketplace, looking at the categories, making screenshots, upload the files, the screenshots on their wiki on Blackboard, uh, our learning management system and then write a few comments in French about uh, what they saw. And the comments were quite interesting. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, avatar customization, that's a very important uh, notion as well. And I'll mention that uh, later when we look at the, um, uh, the results. 
uh, taking photos. This year, I'm really, really, really uh, emphasizing the notion of taking photos for the wiki. Uh, and I hope at some stage we manage to make a movie. <clears throat> so there you go. This is the death by PowerPoint type of slide. I've got so much information there. I did a questionnaire. Uh, I gave a questionnaire in 2012 and 2013, and I will replicate that questionnaire, uh, but change a few questions to the Italian class. Um, for the 2012-2013 questionnaire, I had 15 participants or respondents uh, out of 18, and I asked them the question about playing video games uh, before uh, using Second Life. And actually, you know, we think that students are all very digital natives, uh, uh, you know, and very, very um, uh, accustomed to using computers and uh, can evolve in a 3D environment just like that because they're young. And it's not true. Um, the, not, not all students were actually quite comfortable uh, using um, all the controls uh, on Second Life. and. Yes, exactly. Uh, a bit biologist. It's it's uh it's not true that the students are actually can use their mouse as we think that they can. So, in there, only five of them out of fifteen had played uh, a ro uh, role play games, and uh, none of them were actually using it uh, in to learn the language or never thought about the the idea of using it in uh, um, another language than English. So they were playing it online but with uh, probably American servers or um, Australian servers or whatever. Um, and two, I, 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 mean, I asked as well about social media, using Facebook or Twitter to practice their language. And uh, two only actually uh, used it to practice language online. And I think it's actually not relating to practice language. It's just because they know people that are, you know, they're, they have befriended people. Either because they have traveled, they, they were lucky enough to have traveled uh, in, in, in France or have been in contact somehow with some French speakers or, or well, actually those two were French speakers. Um, and high level, there were B1. And so they, yeah, they, they mentioned the fact that they were using uh, social media to practice language. Um, so getting used to Second Life, as I mentioned before, yeah, eight of them had some challenge with the viewer interface and functionalities. They just couldn't understand the, butter, the buttons at the bottom. And we had, I had taken two sessions to, uh, to, to one hour, one and a half hour session to train them. Uh, the first session was about, uh, you know, understanding the buttons and uh, camera controls. Uh, and the second session was about customizing their um, avatar. Um, but you see I mean, I, uh, on the slide as well in there, I'm just saying that eight found that customizing their avatar was difficult, but they actually enjoyed uh, um, changing their appearance, appearance. And I put under bracket the identity, and the identity meant that the students started probably midway through the trimester wanting to change their identity and this year or their, their physical identity and this year uh, the, uh, the, the the students uh, at the moment they're still uh, after the third session first and third and fourth and fourth session um, some of them are still in animals. With the French class, we started to look at fashion and started to change their their avatar, their shapes. I gave I gave them a little um, a little um, uh, a shape of a of a child, and, and we took a picture among, among the flicker board. Uh, I'm not sure on the side there is a flicker board that, that you can look at um, in here. If you, if you, it's, it's a media print, print so, so you, 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 you might, might be able to look at some of the pictures. But we, we, we took a picture of, of the students being ch children, and, and they, they actually didn't like it at all. all. Whereas, Whereas we, we as adults, I think, do like it. I mean, I remember having uh, a lot of fun being a child uh, uh, as a group in, in the Dresden, Dresden Gallery. gallery. Um, um, and, and we, we were naughty. naughty. I mean, we just wanted to have fun. Whereas the kids, you know, 18 plus, yeah, yeah, 18, 20 uh, year old students, students don't, don't like, they, they want to be either a unicorn or, or they, they tend to want to be a, a panda. Or or they, 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 they want, want to be an animal. They, they, generally, that's how they start. And, and then, then they start, start having, you know, know more human uh, physical appearance when, uh, you know, after the fourth or fifth session, when they start getting used to the, uh, to the viewer and the, understand the notion of presence in the world. 
Um, then, uh, what else? Yes, and the camera controls, of course, they are very, very important. And that's why I realized that uh, a lot of them were distracted with the environment. Um, they, you know, I'm, I'm mentioning 10 founder technology at Hand Disruptive. Um, yes, we had voice and we uh, voice issues, of course. Who hasn't got voice issue on Second Life? And lag. Uh, of, we're, we're relying on our university network uh, in the lab, and of course, when you have 15 students, uh, you know, connect at the same time. Um, in New Zealand, we don't still we still don't have fiber optics, uh, and and uh, we try to find a way of connecting Second Life server to a high-speed broadband system that we have the a university exchange broadband but apparently they don't have any connection anyway so yes we we, we were uh, at times where when on peak hours during uh, during during the day when all students tend to be you know from 10 I'd say probably from 10 to 3 uh, a lot of students across the university are browsing YouTubes and knows, God knows what, and, and it does disrupt, uh, you know, it does create a, a heavy usage on, tech, on, on, on our broadband and hence having issues. Uh, so camera control, very important. It was very distracting as well for the students uh, when they they uh, uh, try to listen to guest speakers like you are now, you know, constantly uh, uh, there was a flux of, of, uh, of speech, uh, an, an endless flux of speech, and if they couldn't zoom in on something and losing their camera control, then they, they would find it extremely difficult to focus. Um, which then, yeah, the three felt too distracted with the environment and six uh, expressed that the facts, the, the, the sessions were too early. Most of them understood why they, they were early. Um, um, but, yeah, I mean, that's unfortunately our situation in New Zealand. We can't afford to be, um, you know, to connect at three o'clock in the afternoon, except for Spanish, since we have Latin America next door. Well, next door, across the Pacific, we're still, you know, quite, um, it's it's quite, quite approachable. approachable. Um, 13 of them felt immersed exploring, and I'm saying however because that was the positive point. You know, 13 out of 15 felt immersed exploring the environment. So that means that that's, that's a winner in the sense that uh, at least we, we managed to get them um, you know, on board with the environment, they understood, um, you know, the notion of of uh, of, of uh, urgency when it came to talking. Um, so that's that's very good. And uh, they also also um, enjoyed listening to people. Uh, some of them, one of them actually, I think she was a she was a hyperactive student. Um, but she felt that it was boring because uh, when when she stayed too long in a place, she just wanted to explore the place. So she'd just go off on a tangent, and we'd be the, left there with the uh, with the guest speakers, and we'd, we'd try to find her on the map uh, just to get her to come back. <laughs> but anyway, she uh, she just explored, and as long as she enjoyed it herself and could talk about it afterwards, you know that, that was the whole point basically. Um, and also, eight, uh, eight uh, out of 15 made friends with other avatars than their group, which also mean, and I put safety there, uh, which means that uh, you know the, the students felt safe. So you know, despite the bad press that Second Half has had about um, you, you know uh, uh, being a being a, a dirty place to be, um, the students. Uh, I mean, we make sure I made sure that I knew the people that they would meet, but uh, and and uh, they felt safe, so they made friends, and, and it's it's good. Um, so all in all, the eleven of them felt that it was a positive learning curve, which is great. Um, it doesn't, doesn't mean that it was a positive language learning curve, but at least the fact that, that they went inward, uh, you know, and enjoyed, enjoyed that, or expressed the fact that it's a positive learning curve, then it's good. Um, eight find it useful, so I think that useful in the sense of language learning. Uh, seven found it refreshing as opposed to the uh, classroom environment, and one scary. I don't know why. I haven't been able to trace that person uh, who said that it was scary. I guess that it was probably someone very uncomfortable with, uh, you know, man uh, using the interface and the camera control. I think that's what it was. And one found it boring. And I think that that boring uh, part was because she uh, just wanted to explore rather than listen, listen to uh, native speakers. Um, 
so, so that's another, another slide. So, so the language learning outcome uh, in here, we a lot, a lot of them preferred uh, using local chat because they felt intimidated, I, 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 I guess. But um, the, thing the thing is, is I realized, realized with distance uh, uh, and we, we try to, uh, uh, we, I, I try to remediate, remediate that uh, this, this year with the guest speakers that we that, that I get uh, to, to meet our students. I didn't prepare the speakers well enough. Um, and so the speakers were so uh, intimidated as well. I mean, even if they are, you know, fully adult um, uh, experienced and confident SL users, when it came to uh, speaking with our students, they felt intimidated. Because they're not university, uh, the, uh, mo most of our speakers were not university based. Uh, they, they're just people uh, like you and me having a, an enjoying a bit of time in, in on Second Life and exploring places and building or whatever they were doing. And being fashion designers or, or whatnot. And then they tended to talk too much and they didn't leave time for the students to think. They didn't have time for the students to ask questions, and um, so, so yeah, yeah, the students tended to switch off um, uh, very, very often. They would sit silently, and then sometimes for the for those who were more comfortable, like the B1 students, uh, only two actually, uh, you know, um, would, uh, would 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 interrupt them with your, with voice. Uh, so no, two out of fifteen, that's not a lot. And some of them were using local text chat. Um, because, because they were too intimidated, and uh, eight of them remained silent, and I think that's because they were they switched off. Uh, particularly, if I remember well, I had a teacher of philosophy who was very nice, but he had very, very strong opinions about uh, um, someone that the students were studying. They were studying, studying um, who was it? It was Sim, um, Simone de Beauvoir, and they were looking at the gender issues. Or well, not gender issues, but just uh, you know Simone de Beauvoir's philosophy around uh, the fact that females are, are born uh, female are not born female, but we are. Um, or what that was it? It, it was um, about society, uh, you know, giving us a gender rather than being naturally uh, male or female. Anyway, and the, and the teacher, uh, the, the, the that uh, teacher. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Nelly. Culturally developed gender. And the uh, guest speaker that I had uh, actually just uh, crushed uh, Simone de Beauvoir right from start, uh, which totally threw the students uh, off. They they just didn't understand what he meant. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> um, so they, so they we were, um, we, we, were, were, we were I, I chose to uh, to uh, actually do uh, the session in the latrines uh, in uh, uh, the antique uh, Rome. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure whether you know that that, that scene, but it's a quite quite, quite a nice nice developed scene where you, it's antique Rome, and I thought that talking about philosophy would have been a really interesting place to to do this, and and of course I chose the latrines because there's nowhere best to think than being in the toilet. <laughs> so anyway, I think that the students were completely bewildered bewildered with the whole notion of you know being on a latrine and talk about um, um, the Beauvoir. You still, still don't see the, the, the print, uh, Nelly? <clears throat> On the slide, you can't see the. Uh, you can't see the. I can't. I I can't see the uh, the slide myself. Okay, should I carry on? Because people will probably uh, run out of time. Okay, so uh, about the language outcome as well, very happy to report that 11 of them have learned new words. And it's not only Second Life related, uh, but it was also, um, uh, you know, just uh, uh, when, they started, when they did their presentation, when we helped them uh, prepare their presentation, you know, they, they learned a few words. Um, about uh, you know how to um, thank the guest speakers to be there, um, etc. So the eleven learn new words, ten reported to making progress with listening, which was mainly the the biggest uh, uh, the, the, the the biggest uh, um, outcome, and uh, nine of them have recycled words. So I mean the, the numbers are quite high here, and I'm very happy with the outcome of this uh, this survey. 
Um, and seven of them felt confident interacting with native speakers. So, you know, they were intimidated in speaking in voice if they don't get the chance to uh, have the time to think. And, and But uh, they, they still were not intimidated by their presence being talking to them. So, you know, using the local chats, uh, text chat was good enough. Um, and uh, so the general comments felt that the four of them felt that the instructions were not clear enough. And yes, I must admit, uh, you know, I was piloting the project, I was discovering their behavior, I was observing them while I was also trying to give them some interesting uh, activities. And, and uh, so I wasn't, I was gauging, since I was gauging, it, it was difficult to figure out uh, whether what I was offering was too hard or too easy. And, um, Yes, I well, I had a teaching assistant, I mean, for Spanish and Italian, but still, I mean, the environment is so rich and all the things that you can do is are so, are so, are so, um, can be so overpowering for the students that, you know, I learned throughout the two, those two years that you need to keep simple. To keep simple. Um, and um, since language and languages is everywhere, everywhere and everything, and everything um, you know, you, know, you could, you could, you could uh, uh, being in an environment already, already the, the, students the students find it very, find it very difficult, difficult to actually react, react in the language. So, so when, they, when they, they're, they're happy or they, or they as, as emotionally, emotionally happy, happy uh, to, to be, be flying and, and, and overwhelmed with the fact of flying, getting, getting them to express that emotion in the, the language, language, you know, instead, instead of saying to their mates sitting next door, oh, wow, I'm flying, flying in English, English. What, what, we're we're trying, what, what I'm trying to do is trying to tell them, them well, if you want to express this, you want to talk to your neighbor, neighbor you, you want to say it, that, that you're, 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 you're so happy to be flying, well, say, say it in Italian. Italian. And, and this is, this is, is it. This, this is what, we're try what I'm trying to do. Because I want them to start thinking straight, you know, not having to translate, because of course, we, you know, classroom instruction still involves a lot of translating on the spot. And what I'm trying is, is getting their emotions so deep that they, they come out with that language. And that's what I'm trying to train, trying to click, make that click where they talk to someone, they will not have to think three, three times about whether their grammar is correct. We don't care about the grammar. Of course, we do care about the grammar, but, but as long as, as what they're coming out with is, is, is understandable, it's, it's one, one step, step further. further. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I'd well, love, love to that. I should, should try. try. I should try. Uh, you know, know, doing, doing a, a little bit of yoga on Second Life with the gong, gong uh, and all the target, target language. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen some meditation, meditation classes, classes on Second Life, and which was a little, a little bit strange, but why not? You know, anything, anything is good for language. language. Anything, anything is language. Is language. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so five of the B1 level reported, reported that the overall experience was positive, and I'm saying that because they were B1. So, so I, I, I try to convince the teachers of higher level, uh, teach, uh, higher, higher level, uh, uh, years, uh, how level language courses, you know, the 300 level, uh, 300, uh, the third year level would be the best. Yeah, yeah dancing is good, um, but, but it's, it's also very distracting. distracting. You know, they would go, oh, it's, it's crazy, oh, I dance, I'm dancing. Look at my German shepherd, he's dancing. But I, yes, I would like, I would like them to be able to react that in the target language. And the B1 would do it, but the A2 not yet. Um, yes, so as I mentioned at B1, we're very happy about having the instruction in the lab as well as the, at, at, uh, at the experience in Second Life. Yes, exactly. That's what I would like Second Life to provide to them. Cognitively, that they get comfortable enough uh, to be immersed enough to think, well, I'm on Second Life, so I'm speaking Italian or I'm speaking Spanish and nothing else. And the problem, that's the problem cognitively because they are all in the, in the lab. They should all be connecting from home. Uh, Second Life, I think, and I mean, this is one of my conclusion, but I'm jumping horses here. But you see, with the first group, the first cohort that I had on the first trimester, they were all connecting from home and they were all focused on the look on communication because that's what they could only cling on to and all of them 
made a con well, I mean, all of them were B1. And, uh, you know, they, they had a fantastic understanding of the, of the French language, but they all rela relied on communication. And that's why they had nothing else around them that could distract them from being in world. And they totally focused on language, whereas all the others, the others, we, if we had small classes, like we had uh, instances where uh, the students, we had only two students uh, for French last year and uh, the Spanish course a group as well, where there were only two and they were sitting far apart in the lab. I have 20 machines in the lab. They were sitting far apart in the lab, so we were totally focused on communication in world as well. But with the Italian class that we have this year, they are, we are 18. Um, 18 machines so of course the students are sitting very closely so I'm I now realize that uh, you know we have to give them task use second life as a mean to find to work on their imagination but actually not working on the communication because we also have voice issues unfortunately but all the work on the target language is actually then in the reflective and in the description of what they have seen in their wiki. So that's, that's where the language uh, work is actually done, as opposed to using Second Life as the mean to convey communication or cognitive uh, language uh, production. We, I find that with a bigger group uh, that are on site together, then it's working with discussions we're getting their language production on discussions and we're working on their collaboration to work on the wiki. Um, I'll explain that when I get to the slide. Okay, uh, shall I move on? I haven't said everything. Uh, they liked the, the being a virtual tourist on real life replicas, but one of them said that they preferred fantasy and artistic visits. The problem with that fantasy and artistic visits, uh, tourist uh, uh, visits or tour guided tours where that uh, it involved a lot of uh, abstract notions because of course art is abstract and uh, it involved their imagination a lot more and uh, um, it's easier in the second language it's far far easier to talk about practical things like, like you know talking about the table or the food that is on the table describe things rather than talk about an abstraction on a, a piece of art um, so, so it, it was a real, real challenge for, for and I, I think, think it's B1 level, basically, just to talk about abstract, abstract things, things, but I, I could be wrong. Uh, okay, okay, so that's, that's one comment. comment. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm going to move on to, the, to, the, uh, to, to what we're doing this year. So, so this year, what we're doing is uh, syllabus of integration. The first pilot side, uh, we didn't have. Uh, I, I wasn't. I was trying to follow the, the curriculum, but you know, I wasn't stuck to it. Uh, um, whereas this year, we're really integrating it with the syllabus. So they have a course book. They are A2, uh, both group, the French and the uh, Italian group. The Italian group is a whole class, and it's compulsory. Uh, we have 14 students and three tutors plus the lecturer, so that's 18 of us. And uh, we have four groups, so we have about roughly three to four uh, students in one group. Um, I try to integrate the, the activities from the course book, so at the moment they're doing Viaggio, uh, they're doing uh, traveling in Italia, so we have uh, Venezia, Solaria, um, we did La Città Perduta as well with some guest speakers um, so that's totally timely and they were doing comparisons so the last session we did uh, comparing two islands uh, it didn't it was very difficult yes me too Nelly I love Italian um, and we did, uh, so the announcements and the instructions are on the quick wiki um, and on the on Blackboard. Um, so we are using that platform as well. So it's totally part of the course. Uh, whereas in the, the previous years, I was using emails and the students were not always reading their emails. They were not really aware, um, you know, so it's much more formally uh, in the, in the, in the, in the which curriculum. means that the students, which are, means following that the students are following a little bit last more. Last year they were just showing up. Last year they up, were just showing up. Basically. You know, they were tourists basically. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, but Facebook, uh, not, but all Facebook Facebook, not all of them are on Facebook, and I'm not sure I want to, you know, um, exchange, you know, my exchange my Facebook, Facebook with, with, the students. with the students. So, um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Not really sure about not Facebook. Really sure about Facebook. Yes, but then yes, I have but to then I have uh, to yes, exchange. It's, it's, uh, yes, it's it's <laughs> it's just another Facebook. It's just another Facebook. It's another Facebook. thing. So, yeah, so I mean, we're yeah, using I mean, we're using the announcements. They, they, they get they look on on the LMS. LMS and that's fine. fine. Yeah. Uh, so, so yes, so the difference with the previous years as well for this year is that they write a report. And they write a report after the session. I'm sorry, I, I did after class. That's what I would like them to do because then they would have time to reflect and think. Uh, so that could be for after the trimester. But at the moment, they are writing uh, a little report of what they've done on, uh, on, on their wiki. They have a, a wiki uh, where they upload their pictures as well. So one page per... Uh, one wiki per group, so um, they get the instructions, I, I write the instructions on uh, each group, I make a copy basically between between all the wikis. Um, last year, last time, last week I, did, I for example, took a picture of uh, uh, the island that they were to visit uh, and the different, I, I put on a, with paint, uh, I, I did uh, um, uh, areas, I put a, a square of the places that they had to visit, so it was a church, because both islands had a church, they had a beach, and they had a piazza. So that's what they had to compare. Uh, and that was on the wiki. Um, yes, we've used local chat because we had so many voice issues. Unfortunately, we had guest speakers, but we couldn't hear them properly. Um, but, but the good thing about the local text chat is that the local chat, chat is also saved in the wiki, so the students can come back to it for their final presentation. They can make a, a little summary of the information because they, of course, won't remember, uh, you know, what what, the, what has been talked about um, with the uh, with the local the, the, the guest speaker. We, well, among the guest speakers, we talked about uh, work. Work on second night, so I had three people who could uh, who could tell, talk about their work. One was a photographer, the other one was a journalist, and has a, a magazine on virtual life. Uh, it's my virtual life magazine, and the third one was a builder, a uh, very famous builder actually. The students didn't realize it, uh, but he's a very famous builder and a very, very good one. Um, um, so, so these, these uh, the groups, uh, the groups then, then you know, um, you know um, met these met people. These we people. did, we local, did chat. local chat. And the students, and the also, students felt also felt comfortable, comfortable enough, to enough to ask questions. That's great. That's great. Um, we had a virtual, we had a virtual tour, tour, so that was so what, that was uh, what uh, we did last week, week. Those, two those two islands. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and, and they, they will have, have the choice as well to present Second Life during, during, their, during their oral session. session. So I, believe I, believe I believe that they will. They will. Um, but they, but they, they, I, think I think that they will have, have to talk about, about a couple of pictures. pictures. Maybe, Maybe not their, their, all their, their oral assessment, assessment will be about that. that. We'll, we'll see. see. I mean, we're still, still gauging how, how they, they, they react. react. But, but um, I, I believe that they will have to present one or two pictures that they took from the wiki and then talk about them and describe the situation in Italian. Yes, and the beauty of this, uh, and I hope they will take the opportunity of that, is that the journalist was so excited about our project that uh, he... He suggested that the student writes a little article, you know, collaboratively again uh, in his magazine on issue. So I really hope that they all take that. So yeah, so my, my observations uh, basically, you know, are what we talked about. Uh, the lab situation versus the fully online, you know, I mentioned those students were connecting from home, uh, relying on communication only, so focusing on the language. Uh, the immersion level is a lot better when the students are totally online uh, and not in the lab. Um, we had with the Italian students, we had an hour session. It's a really short uh, time, um, but at the same time, they have 30 minutes in world. And if we want them to collaborate, you know, involve them in collaboration during the lab, uh, inside the lab, then it's enough. 30 minutes is absolutely um, good enough. Um, and we give them time to brainstorm before the class about the vocabulary that they're expected. Then we go in world and do that uh, activity. Uh, and then we go out before the end of the class and give them about 10 minutes to write in their wiki and talk about what they've just done in the target language, of course. 
Um, Yes, the groups uh, are, is very, very. The groups have been an issue and very confusing for the students as well. Because at the beginning well, of the at the beginning of the year we put them the in year, four groups. We put them in four groups. Um, but of course, the but of course, was, the issue you know, the students, was you know the students. We started with uh, maybe one uh, student, because, uh, student of the late comers of the late comers or the attendance. Sometimes, the attendance, students, don't sometimes students don't come uh, in the tutorial. Uh, in the tutorial, so because they have something else, or whatever, and sick or whatever, and then we end up having a very, very uneven. We groups. Put so then we put again in students again different in groups and then different they get groups and then they get all they have to write in their wiki and God knows what. <laughs> so now we decided that even if there's one student, absolutely, Bosa, it's technically a lot more challenging with uh, no, no oh, with the fully online. Uh, it was in the beginning uh, when the students were not very familiar with the technology. Um, it was definitely more challenging, but I told them to come with a laptop in my office. And then we, I could show them, you know, outside the sessions, I could show them how to uh, do things uh, with the interface. So once they got the interface going and, you know, they were fairly confident, with it, then you know it was it was it was good, but yes, yeah, sometimes it was difficult, especially with the voice, getting the voice, their voice uh, uh, going. That was the main thing. Uh, but I tell you, it's technically challenging as well when you have everyone on class uh, as well, uh, because um, sometimes our computers don't behave properly. And um, I mean, I, I tell the students not to. Like, for example, we had a student the other day who had lost their text chat, so, but they had they had actually dragged it so far away uh, at the bottom that when they were every time they were connecting, the text chat wasn't there, and of course it was hidden. And we finally managed to find it. Um, but but uh, you know, I if we have one computer uh, that is free, whatever activity we do anyway, you know, it can, cannot be second life only. It's for anything. I tell the students to sit at another computer, log off, and then change computers. That's the best way. And then I restart the machine that is faulty. Um, anyway, uh, so giving instructions in Weld, yep. Yeah. So that's the thing. Uh, the problem with uh, our Italian group is, of course, well, the instructions we give them, we give the instructions in the lab. And of course, the students don't know whether they have to turn towards us or they have to, you know, be in world. So uh, it's a little bit difficult. It's a bit confusing for them as well. So we need, to, we really need to work on this. And that's uh, going to be our mission for the next uh, trimester, or the next uh, mid trimester after Easter. Oh, well, the, the next sessions. And also the peer pressure with speaking in the target language. Oh my word! Uh, the students are very excited, and you know they. One German Shepherd, that one of our um, students is is the only boy in the class actually in the Italian group, and um, he's probably a little bit maybe intimidated of being the only boy there. Uh, he's very cool and very very hyperactive. Always wants to go around and and you know not listen to the guest speakers. Um, and, uh, you know, he, his dog, he's represented as a gem shepherd, and his dog uh, ended up being in disco at some stage. And he was just so bewildered by it. Um, you know, he didn't want to use the target language. He didn't want to say, oh my God, so bailando, no, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm dancing. He had to use English and because there was a girl sitting next to her, to him. And, uh, you know, and so we're trying so hard to get the students to express their emotions in language. So, so yeah, peer pressure, very difficult. Uh, but, but that's also in the classroom in general. Um, yeah, and the outcomes as well of having an eight participant group rather than three or four, much easier to have very small groups. Okay, so that's going to be my last slide about my recommendations. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Uh, <laughs> please feel free to really look at the at the Flickr if uh, if uh, the Flickr board. Uh. So anyway, my, my recommendation about an implementation in a university uh, environment: uh, the ITS support always get the ITS support on board because um, you know I mentioned the ports. Uh, if, for example, you're organizing a disco, uh, very important to be able to uh, to, to have the, the port open for 
the disco for, 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 the, for the music uh, that comes through. I invited the student to come at 7 o'clock in the morning to a presentation, or not a presentation, but a, a, a musical there, Paris. Uh, has uh, several, several musicals, musicals and I would strongly suggest, suggest actually to uh, attend some of them because they are fantastically done, uh, particularly the one in the catacombs and another one in, the, in Notre Dame. Um, so, so they have, a, they have, a, they have the, the history of something, so the history of the catacombs or the history of Notre Dame, the history of Broadway, and in, in between the history of it, you have, you have a HUD that, that explains the local chat in English, but the, all the, the speaking is in French. Um, and uh, so those performances are fantastic because it really shows all the beauties of the beauty of Second Life. And uh, so for the French students, it was extraordinary to uh, to witness that. And I've got some on my cyber placebo channel, YouTube channel. I have uh, some examples that you can have a look at. Um, but anyway, uh, just ensure the students uh, can listen to the music if there's music involved. Uh, and the ports are quite complex. Uh, hardware, of course, broadband issues, no problem. Uh, have the department support. If you don't have the, the, the teacher behind you, the students will not take it uh, seriously, so they won't commit. And if you try to prepare, you know, um, if you try to uh, um, prepare lessons, take time to get, get speak speakers and then the students don't show up, it's extremely uh, in deflating. It's hard for you. Um, in fair, inform the students and prepare them well. So um, obviously my instructions were not good enough. And if, inform your speakers well as well. Yeah. So it's very important that the, stu the, the student, the, te the speakers, let the students ask questions. Oh, thank you, Nelly. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go fast because I believe that people might have other things to do in their life. <laughs> um, and in world. Oh, that's very kind. Um, so in world, try to plan at least two training sessions. And very important that the students get on board with the interface, because if you have a guest speaker and they lose the, the camera control, then you've lost the students. And then they're not listening. Um, one of the student comments was that, um, that uh, uh, it was very. If it's, the, uh, I'm trying to remember by uh, by memory. Uh, if very difficult, second life is very difficult for not if you're not a tech savvy. Um, I was. Uh, it was so hard to focus on the talk when uh, I was trying to fix issues. So that was one of the students' uh, uh, um, comments. Uh, get them to explore with a mission. So, uh, you know, if we go into Notre Dame, uh, we know that why we're going to Notre Dame. Or if we go to Venezia, know why we're going to Venezia. Um, and so, for example, in Venezia, with the A1 student, uh, the A1 were extremely frustrated, actually. Uh, they were first year Italian. And they were extremely frustrated because we didn't have that many guest speakers. And actually, I had a few educators who came. Uh, most, uh, all the guest speakers were actually teachers either of Italian or teachers of English, Italian teachers of English or French. And so they know they knew how to speak to them. Uh, you know, they knew how to give time. They knew how to speak slowly, and they knew how to gauge their level. Um, so to have the the right language uh, register and uh, but they were still very very frustrated because there was so much that they wanted to express they were very keen student language learners and um, but they were very frustrated because uh, they just wanted to talk and they couldn't because they didn't have the language um, again don't lose contact with them just ensure that they don't end up being in a, an adult sim or you know being in talking to someone doing silly things. So just ensure that even if they go away, that they are safe. Uh, so it's very important to ensure that you know where, where uh, you know how to, um, uh, to, to deal with group management. So group management, uh, you know, how to deal with conference. For example, the other day we went uh, shopping with the French students. It was last week, last Monday. And uh, we landed in Giza. Uh, Giza is a shopping mall. Um, very, very extensive shopping mall with a lot of different types of clothing for male and female, and it's 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 a very, very good shopping mall. Uh, the problem is that voice is not allowed, so you, we had to really quickly put all the students in a conference so we could still use voice. 
and uh, and we've, we're using voice with the French group because it's a smaller group and we can. Yes, très chic, absolutely. But they were not that impressed with the uh, with the. There was only one who wanted to buy um, to buy uh, to buy one one uh, one skirt. <laughs> Um, and then uh, multitask, yes. I mean, if you're coaching the students uh, on Second Life, uh, that's the problem that I have with the Italians. My Italian level is not good enough to think quickly um, and uh, think about Second Life, about the technical things. So giving instructions to the students about technical stuff on Second Life uh, with the Second Life jargon, um, you know, and using the right verbs at the right time with the right tense, uh, very difficult. Yes, uh, Pionia, very many freebies, but I don't want them to go into places where they look at skins, you know, and see females. And I mean, yeah, they are 18 plus, so they should be able to deal with a, you know, a, a female skin. But I, I don't like those freebie places. I, I'd rather take them to quality places. Even if they can't afford them, they could just buy the demo and it's fine. So, you know. Yeah, actually, actually what, what, uh, what, what I did, did yes, yes, I did, I did that, that with, with a, a student, student of French last year, and he, I gave, I gave him a, I gave him a, a freebie because, because I saw him by chance. He was online. We were, we were not in the session, but he was online, and, and I connected to prepare a session. So, so um, I, said I said hello because I saw him, and, 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 and then he said, "Oh, I'm looking for some freebie stuff because I had mentioned that." When, when we were customizing, customizing the avatar. avatar. And then, then he, he did, did um, he, he, he went to the place and someone gave him a joint. <laughs> um, so, and he was very proud of talking that, of speaking the fact that he had a joint. And the thing is, we had done skydiving from the Eiffel Tower um, and he had a parachute. And he loved using, using, the, using the joint to use the parachute. parachute. Because, because the, the joint, joint was sent, when he, whenever he was wearing the joint, he was flying up to 300 meters high, and then he was using the parachute to come down to wherever he was. He loved it. Yes, in the target language. But he's French. He had spent a year uh, in Grenoble, and his French was perfect. Obviously, he didn't really need uh, to be on the... On the, on the, uh, I mean, he was, he was also sometimes even swearing in French, you know, when we had some guest speakers, and, and, uh, I mean, the guest speakers that I invited uh, were some friends of mine that I know on, on, say, on, in real life, um, but, um, you know, I said to him, just, you know, just, just use, beware with your language, <laughs> like he was saying, may I done, you know, things like that. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Maggie, but it's it's important to know the. Uh, it's actually quite important to know the uh, parolo, parolette as well. Yeah, and the, and the last thing is have a plan B and C and Z, of course. So in the last resort, we have a DVD we can show them, <laughs> a DVD and not using tech in life just in case technology just breaks down. We have a DVD, <laughs> but we can also get them to reflect, you know, on the wiki as well. So yes, so that's uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, me for this uh, this presentation. Uh, I'm happy to answer any question. I'm really glad about the attendance. Thank you for all for coming. It's it's really nice. Oh, Eugenia, Eugenia, I must uh, I didn't see that Eugenia was here, but Eugenia has participated in our Spanish classes last year. Maybe Eugenia, you might want to talk about what you did and how you helped us. That would be really nice. Do you have voice, Eugenia, or you can use the local chat as well? That's okay. Thank you very much for everyone. But I would like I would like Eugenia to to talk a little bit because they were she was very very helpful with us, and the students really enjoyed uh, the sessions with her. No, there's not any resistance. There's just not care uh, for for uh, you know innovation they just don't trust the students to 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 be uh, proactive in trying something new 
So they'd rather stick to what they do best. And, uh, you know, I think that there is a little bit of, uh, and I understand. I mean, the thing is they are swamped with a lot of administrative work as well. There's very little time for them to do some, to be innovative in, in their, um, in their work and you know second life is is is, is very time consuming so um, if for example i mean i, I can deal i can uh, deal a lot co with coaching the students with french italian and spanish but when it comes to chinese for example i, I there's no no way i could take the students uh, you know on board and the thing is the tutors uh, who are who would be willing or would be um, given the position to uh, to do the work, like uh, all the assistants uh, I had for Spanish and and, uh, Span and Italian were actually paid extra to be there. So if the school hasn't got the money to um, pay for it, it was part of the teaching fund that we got, learning and teaching fund uh, for this project. But uh, if the school doesn't have the money to pay for it, and if, if, if they find it uh, uh, extra uh, you know uh, if it is just an extra luxury luxury to their teaching they won't pay for it sorry i didn't read um i didn't read the uh, the text chat conversation inside that i really oh thank you yes i'm 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 shutting up eugenia eugenia that would be great Puedes hablar. Hola, hola, hola a todos. Pueden escucharme. Can you hear me? Sí. <laughs> Excelente. Hola, hola. Estoy bien. Gracias. Hi, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Teacher Eugenia Calderón. Oh, sounds like my lecture. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for invite, inviting me to speak. Sibere. Um, uh, Yes, we have worked. Sibere uh, and I, we have worked a little with um, her, her students, and I offer uh, uh, one of my lectures. I offer lectures about uh, cultural and historic of Mexico, my country, and we have worked with with uh, her students. And well, I think he enjoyed my my lecture. Yeah, my lecture uh, was in, in Spanish, and uh, well, I I think we help we we help each other. Me, Sibere, uh, Sibere helped me also uh, with my practice. Also, he he uh, my lecture. If I work with another people, uh, she let me she lets me um, to develop my own work. So it's a very good experience for me also. Eh, sí, es una, también es una experiencia interesante para mí. Eh, Sibere y yo hemos trabajado juntas, he dado alguna, unas charlas a su grupo. Entonces, esto también, además que ayuda a sus estudiantes, me ayuda a mí misma también para enriquecer mi propia experiencia. Entonces, es interesante. Ya, yeah, she is very interesting to work. Uh, to cooperate between us, uh, other teacher and me. And that is great. It helps. You're welcome. Well, I close my voice now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was, yeah, it was really good to have uh, to have uh, Eugenia, and we talked about the, you know, the Maori. They were interested in talking about Maori issues, indig indigenous issues, or not issues. I mean, just the uh, situation of the uh, indigenous population in Mexico, as com as opposed to um, the Maori situation uh, in New Zealand. So, you know, we were we were doing a little bit of collaboration there as well, um, and it's probably something that they were not studying or were not talking about uh, so much. <laughs> And I, w I was interested as well, uh, a bit biologist. Um, what what uh, what is your project? Are you doing biology on Second Life, or intending to? Mm. <clears throat> 
English one and a science. Uh, so you are going to do uh, English for specific purposes? Are you are you going to do speci specific uh, specific uh, English terminology? And is it going is it in a higher education environment or K minus twelve? This is a high school. Okay. Yep. Three to fifteen years old. So, are you going to take them in world or on open sim? Yep. So, all of them. How many? How many have you got in your class? Mm -hmm. Okay, between twelve and twenty. Oh, that would be very interesting to get uh, to hear your voice, so you can uh, Pronifa uh, to do real time assessment. Mm, what is Pronifa? Must be an, an American organization. Austrian. Okay, you're in Austria. Oh, I think we heard something. It's Austrian. Okay, no problem at all. In the meantime, we there might be some other other questions or comments. I hope I didn't put too much on. If you want to have the uh, PowerPoint uh, slides as well, you're most welcome to ask me. I can give you the uh, I can give you the the textures. My voice might be working now. Can you guys hear me? It is. It is. It is. Perfect. Well, that's going to make it so much easier. Um, yes. Yeah. So, um, y lo, y lo voy a hacer en inglés. Aunque Eugenia me pueda entender, voy, 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 a, voy a estar en inglés. So, I'll speak in English, just even though I know we have some Spanish speakers in the group. Um, yeah, I am in the U.S. Uh, Pronifa is a tool developed by an Austrian group to do um, real-time assessment specifically in virtual worlds. And I included a paper and I spoke with them recently. So this is a tool to do assessment um, for virtual worlds uh, in real time. And it is a really, really strong tool um, that I hope I can use. Um, I spoke to the doctor one time and they're very busy, of course, but um, it may give uh, our class the ability to become um, a paper for them, which would give me more weight in trying to use virtual worlds um, throughout the school, uh, outside of just my own classroom. And and so, what are you what what are you intending to do with the uh, with the students in world? What kind of activities? We uh, the plan um, is to to instruct. I mean, the entire curriculum. So so basically, their their earth science class and English class, which are which are two required courses as freshmen will be taught entirely within world so we'll we'll spend a week in acclimating and then they'll have lectures and they'll have projects and they'll have tests and they'll have assessments within the world um, we have um, Sloodle set up with the open sim so then they can take uh, it's connected to a Moodle are you able to uh, hear me in the chat system, so then they can be assessed in the words IQ class um, and um, and just like any regular class except they will be entirely um, Are you able to within, use the chat within, box? Uh, OpenSim, yeah, they'll all be avatars. Uh, we'll gamify the classroom. We're already talking about gamifying the classroom. We'll have a storyline to help with immersion. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's the plan. We're still in the design phase right now. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of the building over the summer. Wow. Uh, it's, um, it's interesting. It's a very interesting project. Uh, when you talk about gamifying your, I mean, you know, yeah, the, the in world is a really good place to do gamification. You you put a HUD and you do some points. I mean, it's a, I've done gamification now about four years, five years in my classrooms now. It works really well. But virtual worlds is a great platform um, to to implement 
um, gamification to help with motivating the students to actually work since 13 to 15 year olds are not naturally motivated to do much of anything that's related to academics. Yeah, absolutely. I've been trying to think about ways of, uh, of integrating uh, um, games as well with, with, uh, with our classes. Um, and except, apart from a, a treasure hunt that we did mm, uh, probably about two years ago, but it wasn't, it wasn't really a competition. All they had to do was just find all the eight objects and then take a picture of it. Um, we're going we're gonna to have... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. Go for it. No, no, I was just going to say that the game will, will be, will be a more of a, they'll, they'll earn experience when they do um, tasks related to the learning. The experience will give them levels that translate into grades. They'll have to accomplish quests, which are, again will be situational um, based on what they're learning about in earth science and English. Um, and it'll, so it'll be, um, it won't be like a single small games here and there. It will be the whole theme of the class will be a game. They'll have to. They have to perform, and hopefully be motivated to get levels and get experience and get awards and get money to get things for their avatar. Uh, and to do that, they have to learn material. So that's that's the plan. Ah, okay. You, um, your students are not learning French by any chance, because I know someone on OpenSim as well who has an interesting. I mean, they are on on Franco Grid. And they're doing, he's doing uh, something fairly similar to you. Um, he's teaching, um, I think he's teaching also biology. Um, ah, let me think. And math. And they build, uh, they build a, he got the students to, uh, his students, his pupils to build a, a lighthouse. And it was a matter of, because it was round and it had, it contained a certain amount of bricks. And the lighthouse, of course, you know, starts with a, a wider base and then go down to a, a shorter base at the top. Um, and they were counting the bricks and they were doing um, very, very interesting um, very interesting projects. Uh, his name is Tao Vakano. I'll put it in the like a local chat. And feel free to contact him. I, I don't think that he speaks a lot of English, but he, he might be able to speak Spanish. <laughs> sure, I'll contact him. We have a French teacher here, so she could help me. Um, she really wants to also use virtual worlds. But the thing is, once you get to OpenSim or to Sims, you, you have a lot less connection than in Second Life. Like in Second Life, it's a lot easier to contact people and to see what people are working on. Uh, a lot of sims, like my sim will be private, so, so people won't be able to drop in and, and, and contact us there. So um, there's a lot of things going on in Open Sim, but you won't, you know, it's really hard to find out about them because of the nature of Open Sim, where a lot of it, some of it is connected, like no, it's great, but a lot of it is not connected. Like ours will not be connected to anything else. Yeah. Um, hang on. On Google Plus, I think that his name is Sébastien Vimao. Uh, I will try to find it. Uh, hang on a second. Um, but he, it could be very interesting because what, what he does as well uh, for Earth Science is that they have replicated a little island where they build that lighthouse. But they also, it's, it's a place that is close to their, their, their in Marseille, in the southwest of France, uh, southeast of France. And so he explores the marine life. And he gets the students to do uh, pupils do, to do different things, uh, you know, analyze the algae, the type of algae, and the, the type of fauna and flora there. And it's it's quite interesting. Um, and let me find his his real life name. Um, hang on a second. So I just need to be uh, to find. YouTube. Apart from that, is there anybody else who has interesting projects as well? Sébastien Janik, I think or Janik Sébastien. Sébastien Simao. That's him, Sébastien Simao. So I'll, I'll write it in the, um, in the chat. 
the local chat. I'll, I'll write his name in the local chat. Sebastian. You know, on Google Plus. All right. Well, I think that... Uh, We have finished the session, unless people want to talk a little bit more. Oh, I could show you, actually, I could show you a, a video if anybody is interested, but you'll have to uh, um, watch it from, uh, from um, uh, just an example. It was an improvisation uh, of a Spanish student, since you all speak uh, Spanish, I believe. You can uh, see on this video that I've just, uh, I made a, a little machinima of, um, of that student who's doing uh, a little description of a, of a place. So if you're interested, please, you can watch it. Thank you for the applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. Uh, it was really wonderful. I think I could watch it all over again. But I noticed you left uh, the WizIQ class at some point, but I think it was probably the end. Am I right? Oh, did I? No, I don't think so. Because I don't see you there, but maybe and the sound wasn't coming through, so I'm not sure. In any case, I've recorded this through Camtasia. So there will be a YouTube video coming out with this. So I'll share it with everybody. So thank you so much. And um, looking forward to a lot more. Thank you to you. Thank you. Well, I, uh, a bit biologist, I am happy to talk a bit more if you want. Um, I will need to uh, uh, leave now, but um, yes, I'll be I'll be very happy to see you in world and and talk a bit more, or maybe or, or even on open sim. Uh, you're going to the virtual world uh, best practice in education, so I'm presenting there too. But uh, yeah, I'll probably be on open sim as well, just to see what people are doing. Okay, I've stopped screen sharing. Uh, I'm back again. Um, so if anybody's still here, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, this uh, was totally in uh, Second Life. Our sessions will be a combination. Some sessions will only be uh, right here in the WizIQ classroom, and some will be out of the uh, WizIQ classroom. Let me just uh, leave Second Life so you don't hear anything there. So is anyone still here? If you could just uh, give me a thumbs up if you're still here in the classroom, that would be great. So I'll realize what's happening. Uh, let me see if we can get our speaker to come back. That would be great. Uh, is there a way f that uh, you can come back? I don't know if she's still here. Uh, no, it was oh, yeah. oh, can you come back to the live, to the WizIQ class, just so that I can get a photo of you in real life and uh, we can close the chat? It would be a closure. Oh my God. Just kidding. I wasn't planning. <laughs> well, you're not. I wasn't planning, planning on on, uh, <laughs> on, <laughs> on being on camera. camera. <laughs> uh, hang on, I'm just going to remove all the things in the background and. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, so I see Doris is also there. That's great. Let me just um, take away my. Okay, there we are. Uh, I can't, I can't see myself, myself, but it's okay. I trust that, that uh, <laughs> you can see something. something. Yeah, it's it's echoing. Let me take away my. Um, okay, it shouldn't be echoing now. It was me causing the echo. If you if you leave Second Life. Yeah, I did. I left it, so now it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so we'd like to thank you, and you get real virtual, real virtual uh, handshakes. I mean, hand claps there. So that's that's. Um, thank you. Thank you. And you can join us in, um, in the course area. There's a link that Tom has added. And uh, you'll be uh, able to, yeah. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. And uh, share the PowerPoint presentation with me so I can add it to uh, the MOOC 
the Second Life Milk area. But it was wonderful. Um, you've got a wonderful Thank voice. Thank you. Very pleasant. Um, I'm just looking at the chat now. Yeah. I've managed to uh, look because I'm, I'm used to Adobe Connect. So yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a little bit different from uh, Adobe Connect, but that's fine. I'm there. Uh, if you want to have the uh, YouTube video uh, that I put on uh, for anybody who is interested in seeing a student in action, uh, hang on a second. I'll just put it in the local chat there. I think I have I it. I have it right here. Yeah. I'll put it for you if I get it fast. Let's see who gets there faster. That's it. There, I got it. Okay, here it is. There's the uh, the video. I think it's that one. Yes. Oh, you added it before me. Wow, you're yes, fast. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a technologist. I'm trying to be faster than yeah. anybody else. <laughs> you must have had it on your mouse. That's all. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, and I'm looking forward to collaborating. Um, I'm involved, I've been involved since uh, 2006, I believe, with the International Writing Exchange. Uh, maybe we can bring the International yeah. Writing Exchange into Second Life. It's uh, teachers, it's yeah, yeah, teachers bring their students, they're, and they're from all over the world, and the idea is to improve your English language. Uh, writing. So I think that uh, that's something that we might want to do. Absolutely. In, in our language center, uh, in real life, in our learning language center uh, where I work, we have also a language buddy program where we try to uh, get the, uh, students uh, learning English, um, you know, connect with the students who are learning their language. Mm -hmm. Generally, the English uh, students who are coming to uh, New Zealand are from Asia. So we have a lot of Chinese, Korean, and, and Japanese. So we we managed to find easily uh, buddies, uh, you know, for Japanese and and uh, uh, Chinese. But it's very difficult to find European ones. The problem with the uh, second life and synchronous communication for us is, of course, the time zone mm -hmm, because students cannot. Yeah, yeah the students common. cannot always connect. So. At the moment, if we have any Italian uh, uh, teachers, we, we, we're trying to connect, and you might have some ideas actually, we're trying to connect the Ital first year, we have, I think they have about 80 students, and we're trying to connect the uh, uh, Ital students, and we, we're not sure what to do, so we thought about the Facebook page, mm -hmm. but I believe that the Facebook page needs to have some, uh, you know, activities like Doris is doing. Um, with her own students about, you know, giving them little tasks to do, like uh, what is in your purse today or, um, you know, what do you like, what is, what, what, what did you have for breakfast this morning or whatever. And yeah. then they could take a picture and then they could right. just describe what it is. But I thought that if you leave the students to their own accord, I'm not sure how, how they will connect with each other. I mean, we, we, we were thinking of doing a match, you know, uh, answering a little survey about their hobbies and interests and age range. And and, uh, and then my colleague who's in charge of, of the buddy program says it's just such a, a big a big task to match our students already in real world that if we try to also get involved into with, a, with a, an online, it will be even more uh, work for us. So yeah, she's not very keen in getting involved. So what we do, we do, we have a, a buddy, we call them study buddies, and they're actually, we use Moodle. Uh, we've been using Moodle, and that's, right. that's how they connect. So we've got students from all over the world. Uh, they're university students. Do you have the link? Um, to the International Writing Exchange. Uh, I do. Uh, you can, if you go to the very end, I'll, I'll give you the link to the, uh, to the Moodle. Technology.org. If you go to the very end of the page, you'll see it. It'll say International Writing. The very end of the page, the front page. It'll okay. say, yeah. But I, I can share that with you. I've got your email. I, I can share the link with you. Yep. Because it's, it's currently on it. I think the PowerPoint, the syllabus is on a Google Drive document. Because it's right. Moodle, so it's password protected. You can't. I mean, we don't let guests in because uh, some of the students don't feel comfortable with people coming in. But um, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But the next the next uh, course is starting in September, and our Japanese. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah. This is where we. Oh, that's right. That's where it's different. That, uh, yes. 
Yeah, yeah New Zealand That's also, right. you know, starts the year in March and then finishes uh, the second trimester in October. So it leaves a very, very, very short yeah. time frame yeah. for the students to start connecting and then bang, they're on holiday. So or they work. Uh, but, you know, if we if we can make the initial contact mm -hmm. uh, happen and then, you know, they do whatever they want. I mean, we can't be behind them all the time either. I, but that's I it. If, if it's a Moodle, yeah. If it's a Moodle course, then it's, you know, they can connect there and that's not a problem. And generally, uh, teachers don't mind it and students find time for it. If, if it's good, you know, if it's interesting enough for them, they'll... Uh, they'll stay and they get badges they get rewards of different kinds to keep them happy yeah 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 apparently it's a it's yeah. an important thing as well it's, it's yeah. putting gamification in mm -hmm. in perspective yeah. yeah so what time is well, it in new zealand well, what time is it right now it must, um, is it a good time it 10 past 10. oh so it is 10 past 10 a.m it a.m oh so it's morning all right, so that's pretty good. Yeah, this morning I was, it was 8 a.m. when I woke up, when I took, well, 7 actually, 7.30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's okay. My, my daughter studied in New Zealand for three years in Christchurch. Oh, right. Yeah, so I, I know. Yeah, well, I, oh, Christchurch. Yes, yeah, so I know exactly. I know about the time. So I would have, my computer would be configured, would be set to her time, to New Zealand time zone. So I lived um, that yep. zone for a while. Yeah. <laughs> virtually virtually of course all right so thank you yeah. thank you so much and um, i hope we'll be able to uh, hear you very soon we're going to have this this is probably going to be an annual event uh, we'd like it to be an annual event so this is the first time we're hoping that uh, uh, we'll learn as much as we can so we can make the next one even better so thank you yeah, yeah but that's one is oh it sounds, it yeah sounds like a very very good event Thank you. Tom has added a link to, we're also, for the, for the MOOC, we're actually in a few places. We're in Second Life. We're also, I don't know if you noticed, we're also on a Moodle as well as on Wiz IQ. So a few areas. Thank you. Doris, well, I'm, I've just, uh, yeah. I've just opened the... I've just opened that uh, that link, and uh, I, I just asked whether we need an account to access. Yes, yes, you do. The, uh, the, right. Yeah. Okay, so I'll I'll create an account as well for that. Yeah, and that way I'll be able to connect with you because I'll have your email since I'm the um, the admin. And Tom's also well. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's the document. I don't know if you have it. The syllabus for the SL MOOC with the different uh, areas. There's the Moodle and, and the WizIQ area as well as um, uh, Second Life. All right, so thank you everyone. Thank you uh, for being here, for sticking. Uh, to it for such a long time. Sorry about the uh, technical issues at the beginning, but um, that's how things are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Doris. Uh, can you speak, Doris, or you're not able to speak? I don't know why you're not speaking. I, I would love to hear your voice. So it's um, Tijuana, Tahoe. Doris, you've got the uh, the audio. So you can speak if you want. Tom, your Besitos looks different from uh, Dor when Doris says Besitos. The spelling is different for some reason. There, you see it's a different spelling. Is there another, is that Besitos for another kind of Besitos? It, a different spelling. I'm used to Doris. You see, I my 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 Spanish. Yeah, it's because of the size. It looks different. There are little kisses. I know. The kisses. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Tuan, uh, Tuan ha, Haya, Tuan Anna. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. I guess. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. See you later, Doris. Thank you.